recording started. Today we're going to be looking at sets of numbers for Algebra 2. And what we're talking about um, first is distinguishing between types of numbers, describing sets using a verbal description, roster notation, and set builder notation, and determining intersections and unions of sets of numbers. So let's get started. What I'd like you to do is pause the recording and try this matching. When you're looking at matching these sets of numbers with these descriptions on the right side. So pause the recording and after you've tried it, you can turn it back on and check to see if your answers are correct. What we're looking at for the first one is a set of numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. So we want to know if they're integers, natural numbers, whole numbers, or real numbers. And they are whole numbers. Whole numbers begin with 0. And they do not have any fractions or decimals. For number 2, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3. And those are the natural numbers. Natural numbers are in the set of whole numbers. Um, they just don't contain 0 in their set. And for number 3, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 2. Those are considered integers. Integers contain positives and negatives, but no fractions or decimals. And then for number 4, we have negative 100, 3 fourths, 10.2, and 22. And those are real numbers. Real numbers have your fractions and decimals and positives and negatives and whole numbers. All right, moving on. Hopefully you got all of those. If not, make sure you look over and notice the differences between them. Rational versus irrational numbers. So we're going to talk about what a rational number is and what an irrational number is. So let's define them both. A rational number can be expressed as a ratio of A over B. So even if you're given a decimal, you need to be able to express it as a fraction, um, such as 0.2 is 2 tenths. So if you can take that decimal and write it as a fraction, then it's considered a rational number. So this includes your terminating terminating and repeating decimals. Okay, so terminating meaning something like 0.2 or 0.75. Repeating would be something like 0.333333, something like that. So rational numbers do include the terminating and repeating decimals. And then for your irrational numbers, we have, um, they can't be written in fraction form. So that would be something like, oops, I'm sorry, I have a slash mark there. That would be something like um, pi. Pi is an irrational number because it doesn't terminate and it doesn't have a repeating pattern. So pi is considered an irrational number. Some of your square roots are irrational numbers, like the square root of 7. If you try that on a calculator, it will end at the end of your calculator, but it does go on from there. Um, we just can't see all the, the decimal places. So irrational and rational. And symbols, your lesson does do a lot with, well, does a little bit with the symbols. So let's talk about the different symbols for the different types of numbers. Um, a rational number. has the symbol Q. And natural numbers, the symbol N is used. And for integers, it's a Z. And for whole numbers, it's a W. So some of these are easy to remember. <laughs> some of them, maybe not. Um, real numbers, they have the R.
And usually the R is written with um, like that. And irrational numbers have the I. So now you can see why rational um, and integers don't use R and I because we already have those for real numbers and irrational numbers. Now your real numbers are all of your numbers here. So rational, natural, integers, whole numbers, irrational, they're all included in the real numbers. All right, so let's talk about sets. A collection of objects is called a set. And within that set you have what are called elements. And the elements can be numbers, objects, people, or anything like that. So your elements can be numbers, but they don't have to be. Um, if you're talking about the set that contains the month of the year, then you're talking about um, words, January, February, March, and that type of thing. Um, what's the difference between the examples below? That's what we're going to look at next. So if you look at those, you might want to pause and just take a minute to look at those and see if you can see the difference between the two. This first side on the left, 2468, cat, dog, mouse, negative 100, 0, 3, 4.5, they're all sets that have a certain number of elements. So this one has four elements, cat, dog, mouse is three, and this last one has four elements as well. And that's called a finite set. A set that has the three dots at the end of it means that this set is continuing on. Um, same here and same for this one. The three dots tells you that the set is continuing on to infinity and we call that an infinite set. So we have a finite set and an infinite. We know a set is infinite if it has the three dots at the end. So we're going to take a look at what we do with sets. We're going to take a look at the notations used to describe sets and then we're going to look at some Venn diagrams. So roster notation is writing the set with the braces, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And usually it has a letter as its name, especially with what we're working with. So this is roster notation. Verbal notation for this same set would be, would be to say S is the set of even numbers from 0 through 8. So that would be a verbal description of the set. And then set builder notation is sometimes a little bit more confusing. Um, we would use a variable to represent each element in this set. And we, the way that we read this is we say that x such that x is an even number. So we're saying that the elements in this set are an even number. And I'm going to write that below here. x, the way that we read this, x such that Basically, the bar is the word such that x such that x is an even number. So that's the way we read that when we have set builder notation. And your lesson does use a lot of set builder notation, so you want to become familiar with that. All right, so let's look at what we can do with sets. We're going to look at some symbols that you may not have seen before. Um, I'm going to write them over here to the side. This U is called union. Oops, I'm actually writing a U. There's no little line there. It's called union. Okay, and basically what you're doing when you're performing a union between two sets, you're putting the two sets together. And then the upside down U is intersection. Now for intersection, you're taking what's in the two sets um, that are in common. Whatever the two sets have in common and you're creating a new set. So when you're doing a union and an intersection, you are creating new sets. But when it's a union, what you put in that set is everything everything from the two sets gets combined into a new set. Um, when you're doing an intersection, you're only taking things from each set that they have in common. So what you see in one set, if you see it in the other, it becomes part of the new one. So 
let's do that for these two sets. We're going to do A union B. So I'm going to take set A and set B, and I'm just going to combine them. If you have any repeats of numbers, you don't write them more than once. So I have 1, 2, 3 in set A. In set B, I have the 1 and 2 already listed. And then I have 4, 5, and 6. And so that is A union B. Then I'm going to do A intersection B. So now I have to look and see what do I have in A, what do I have in B, do I have any repeats? Well, I have a repeat of a 1 because I have a 1 in both sets. I have a 2 in both sets. I don't have a 3 in this set. And, and of course, I don't have a 4, 5, or 6 in set A. So my A intersect B set is going to, going to contain 1 and 2. Then this symbol here represents subset. Okay, the sideway view is subset. So what they're asking is every element, let me write it out here, is every element, sorry, bear with me, I want to use black font here, is every element of A also in B. So that's what you're asking. When you're, when you're looking at this, the way you want to read it is A a subset of B. Let's put that up here also. The way that we read this is A a subset of B. So what that's saying is every element of A also in B. So we look at the elements of A, 1, 2, 3. Um, 1 and 2 are in B, but 3 is not. So our answer to this question is no. A is not a subset of B. Okay, so we have A is not a subset of B. Okay, now we're going to look at some Venn diagrams. Um, you can list sets as Venn diagrams as well. And in these sets, I'm going to place the numbers 1, 3, 5, 9, and I'm going to put an 8 in here, and I'm going to put a 2, 4, and 6. Okay, so if we're looking at a Venn diagram, and we see these numbers, the first thing that we're going to do is list the elements of A, B, and C. So set A, we want to list out the elements of set A. We're going to list all of the numbers that are in this circle. A is the whole circle. So it's going to be 1, 3, 5, 8, and 9. And then for set B, we're going to look at B. It has 2, 4, 6, and 8. And then set C only has an 8 in its set. So we have these three sets, and now we're going to do A union B. So you may want to pause and try A union B, and then turn it back on to see the answer. A union B will be putting both sets together. So I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9 for A union B. Then A intersect C will be where the two sets overlap each other. So I'm looking at um, I'm looking at A and C. Where do they overlap each other in the Venn diagram, or what do they have in common? If you look at the set notation here, they have an eight in common, and that's it. So A, A intersects C is the element eight. That's all that they those two circles have in common. So let's try also one more. Let's do A intersect B. So for A intersect B, we're looking at where these two intersect each other. And you can look at the Venn diagram, or you can look at your sets up here. And you can see by the Venn diagram pretty quickly that the only place that they intersect um, is at C, which contains the element 8. So if we look at our sets up here, too, you can see that the only thing that they have in common is an 8. 